All right, so our topic for this unit is AI consciousness, artificial intelligence consciousness, robot consciousness, things like that. And so um, I thought it would be good to have a quick uh, reminder or overview of qualia and consciousness, because we've covered this in class a few times before, but uh, now it's going to be central again. So uh, just going over the topic. So if you recall, uh, qualia or consciousness, these are sort of two terms for the same thing. They're terms for uh, what it feels like to uh, experience things, sort of to have experiences, to have a subjective sort of uh, understanding of the world or experience of the world. So the qualia are the sort of specific subjective experiences that you have. Um, consciousness is just having subjective experiences at all. So our question in this unit is, could artificial intelligence have qualia? Could artificial intelligence have experiences? And the way we're going to look at it specifically, because this is sort of the way it's typically been framed, is that uh, we're going to look at one sort of qualia or one sort of consciousness or one sort of experience as sort of the central kind of experience or uh, consciousness that we care about, and that's going to be understanding. So understanding is a specific kind of qualia, a specific kind of under experience, that you have when you sort of uh, when you grasp an idea or when an idea uh, makes sense to you or when something uh, makes sense to you. So uh, the basic thought is that when I say an English sentence to you, like it is not raining outside, uh, when I say that to a rock, the rock doesn't understand me, uh, the rock doesn't even hear me. When I say it to a cat, the cat hears me but maybe the cat does not understand me. The cat doesn't speak English. Maybe it's from France. Maybe no cats speak English. Maybe no cat ever understands when you say it's not raining outside. But you understand me. When I say something, you sort of have an experience and you think about uh, rain and things like that. And you understand what I mean when I say it. So that's a sort of qualia uh, attached to what's going on. So it sort of feels like something to understand me, there's something special going on in your head that's not going on in the cat's head or the rock's head. And so the question for our unit is, is that going on in uh, the robot's head? So one way to think about it is if we have these little like thought bubbles that illustrate what's going on in somebody's head. Uh, when I talk about a cat, a human will have in their thought bubble like a little cat uh, with whiskers. And the question is, let's say I talk about a cat to a robot. Is there anything in the robot's thought bubble? Or is it just empty? Is it like talking to a rock or to a cat? And so that's our question in this unit, and we'll see various perspectives. Searle says, no, there's nothing in the thought bubble. Bowden uh, says, yeah, there's something in the thought bubble. It's sort of minimal, but there's something there. And then Churchland and Churchland say, look, in principle, uh, the cat could be 